In the last episode, I put the assembled engine on the K-member, raised the car, rolled the assembly under the car, and attempted to lower the car to hopefully bolt up the K-member. This didn't go exactly as planned. I ended up breaking off the inlet tube on the rear of the supercharger. So much for measuring and remeasuring. Let's take a step back and revisit what I had to modify for this swap. So, there's a number of issues that have to be addressed when doing a top-end swap with an L67 supercharged 3.8 liter V6 in a Camaro. I'm not sure I covered this in previous videos, so here's a recap of all the mods done so far. By far, the supercharger inlet is the most challenging of all the mods for this swap. I thought I would have just enough room between the inlet and the firewall for a 3 inch 90 degree elbow that at the worst would require some modification of the firewall. As you have seen, this wasn't the case. But more on that later. The EGR valve isn't much of an issue if you live in a state that doesn't require emissions testing. But I'm in Texas, so the EGR valve has to be functional. This presents a problem of where to put it. So I decided to fab up a bracket, make a trip to the local wrench apart, and grab some EGR tubing and fittings. The tubing is pretty flexible and the fittings bolt together. So I grabbed what I needed and proceeded to piece together the EGR plumbing. I added some JB Weld between the fittings to help with sealing to avoid any issues with vacuum leaks. Since the headers are for a normally aspirated Camaro, the bung for the EGR tube is on the passenger side front. I decided it was the only location for the EGR valve that would provide access if it ever had to be changed. The coil pack had to be relocated as well. Although it will require extending the pigtail connector, that video will be coming soon. I found some stainless steel headers from eBay early on in the project. The price was right and they came with all the hardware and crossover pipe. I think I paid like $149 with shipping. Extremely cheap. Well, you get what you pay for, it took its toll. The passenger side header flange was upside down. I tried reaching out to get it replaced to no avail. So I made it work by cutting reliefs for the head bolts and drilling new holes for the header bolts. No one sees this, so I don't think this would be an issue and I don't want to buy another set of headers. With the goal of having most of the engine and intake system assembled before installing, I fabbed up a flange made from one quarter inch aluminum plate and a three inch aluminum tubing to mount the throttle body to. Yeah, that's my old friend JB Weld. This is basically a mock-up until I get a proper flange welded. I picked up some flexible tubing for the intake to make the connection between the inlet elbow and the throttle body flange and even found a small bracket on the fuel rail to mount it to on the right side of the engine, driver's side. This was the perfect location since this would be easy to connect the throttle cable without any modifications and would be a direct route towards the original air filter location. Another major issue is the thermostat housing. I tried modifying the Camaro thermostat housing by separating the base from the inlet tube and rotating it to where I thought it would clear the firewall and have access for the radiator hose. This didn't quite pan out. So, while I was at Wrench Apart, I came across a Geo Metro that had a housing I thought would work. It did. This is an inch and an eighth hose size this takes, and after comparing it to the thermostat housing on the Camaro and some test fitting, I needed to file the holes open just a little bit. The opening is actually larger than the opening in the thermostat for the Camaro, so I don't see any issues with this, and at most, I'll have to do a little bit of uh, adapting the hoses together to get this thing to work. So after putting it in and taking it out several times, I finally got it in and it's seated and the thermostat's in and this part should be good to go. Now it's time to address the inlet on the supercharger. Since that, w that was not going to work, I had to find an alternative method and the only thing I've ever seen is basically going through the side of the supercharger on the left in the back, which in this engine bay presents a serious problem. So right here in this location was the only spot I've ever seen it work. So I got to drill out 
and the hole saw and went at it. I uh, cut through this aluminum pretty easily actually with this hole saw and it was easy to remove the plug. It left a little bit of a ridge on the inside that was quickly cleaned up with a file. This saw uh, all in all took, I don't know, 20 minutes, maybe an hour or so, but uh, got it done and then I had to shape the pipe in order to get it to sit flush on the supercharger. And then after I did that, I went ahead and cut it down to size and then added the block off plate on the back with uh, JB Weld as an extra gasket surface and went ahead and mock this up in the back too. Again, you'll never see it, so it's under negative pressure. I don't think it'll be an issue. On the next episode of Jay Hunto's Garage, I drink a Diet Coke. Jay Hunto's Garage. Definitely, definitely. Check it out.